Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe my channel for the solution of such more problems. Now let's solve this problem. In this problem we are given that gear C drives the V-belt pulley D at a constant speed. For the belt tensions shown, calculate the gear tooth force P and the magnitude of the total forces supported by the bearings at A and B. Right? So we have to find this force P which is applied at this gear tooth and we have to find the reactions at this point A and this point B, right? So to start the solution, let me put uh, this coordinate system at point A. So if we move this and if we place this coordinate system at this point A, so this is our coordinate system, right? As we can see, this is our positive X, positive Y, and this is our positive Z coordinates, right? So now as we can see that this P force is in the X, Y plane, right? So it will have two components, right? So it will have one component in the Y direction. So this component will be this will be the component of this P which will be acting in the negative Y direction and this is the cos component. This angle is given so we can write that this is py right and this component is acting in the negative x direction right so if we represent that component right so we will have this component right and this will be px and the pz component of this p force is zero since this p force is in the xy plane right so since the system is in equilibrium right so at uh, point a and b we will have uh, two reactions right both of these bearings are simple bearings so they are not supporting the thrust right in the z direction right so there will be only two reactions at point a and two reactions at point b right so we will have one reaction let's say that one reaction is acting in the a positive x direction let's say this is a x reaction and there will be one another reaction let's say that that reaction is acting in the positive y direction right so this is our second reaction right so this is a y similarly we will have two reactions at point b as well right so let's say that there is one reaction which will be acting in the positive direction this is our assumed direction right so this is b x and we will have one another reaction let's say that that is acting in the positive y direction right so this is our b y reaction right so in this problem we are required to find this p force and we are required to find the reactions at point A, the total resu resultant reaction at point A and the total resultant reaction at point B, right? Now, since the system is in equilibrium, so if we apply the summation of moment about the z-axis at point A equals to zero, right? If we apply this equilibrium condition, so then as we can see that this Py component is producing the moment about the z axis is in this direction right this p y force is trying to rotate this gear in this direction right and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative z direction right so this means that this is producing the moment in the negative z direction right so this means that uh, if we look into this mo uh, in this moment from this direction so then it is producing the clockwise moment about the positive z-axis, right? So since this arrow is acting in the negative z direction, right? So we will write minus and this py force. So py force is p cos of 20 degrees, right? This py, let me write that this is p cos of 20 degrees and this px is p sine of 20 degrees right so this is px so now this minus p cos of 20 degrees and the perpendicular distance of this py component from that point a from or from that z axis is, is how much the radius of this gear right so the radius of this gear is 120 mm so we will multiply this with 120 right now as we can see that this px component is passing through their z axis right so the perpendicular distance of this px component of this p force is zero right so it will not be able to produce the moment about z axis right now if we look into these two 100 and 200 right so they are producing the moment about the z axis as well 
So, if we consider this 200 Newton force, so it will try to rotate this pulley in this direction, right? And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the positive side direction, right? So, this means that this 200 Newton force is producing the counterclockwise moment about this positive Z axis, right? So, we will write plus and this will be 200 and the perpendicular distance of this 200 Newton force from that Z axis is is the radius of this pulley right and the diameter of this pulley is given this is 160 mm right so the radius is 80 mm so we will multiply this with 80 similarly if we look into this 100 newton force so it will try to rotate this pulley in this direction in the opposite direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the moment will be in the negative z direction right so we will write minus and this is 100 into 80 right the perpendicular distance from that z axis is will remain the same right so this is 100 into 80 and this the both of these reactions are not producing the moment about z axis and both of these reactions are also not producing the moment about the z axis right so this will be equal to 0 right and if we solve for p so then p will be equal to we can take 80 common from this so they will be equal to this p will be equal to 200 minus 100 into 80 divided by cos of 20 into 120 right so from this we get the magnitude of p which will be equal to which is equal to 70.9 newtons right so this is that p which was required right if we apply the summation of moment about the x axis at point a equals to 0 right so now remember that all those forces are components which are parallel to the x axis will not produce the moment about the x axis right so this is very important so now as we can see that this px is parallel to the x axis so it is not producing the moment about z uh, about x axis this is also uh, parallel to the x axis so it will not produce the moment about x axis this is also parallel to x axis this bx is also parallel to x axis and both of these uh, moments, both of these reactions uh, will not produce the moment about x axis in the, since they intersect with the x axis and the perpendicular distance of both of these reactions ax and ay are zero, right? So they will not produce the moment about the x axis, right? So this py component will try to rotate the whole system about x axis in this direction, right? And if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the negative x direction, right? So, this means that this is producing the clockwise moment about the x axis, right? So, this is minus Py. So, now Py is, uh, the, now we know the magnitude of P. So, this Py is 70.9 cos of 20 degrees. And the perpendicular distance of this Py component from that point A is how much? So, this distance, this is 100 mm, right? So, we will multiply this with 100, right? Similarly, as we can see that this by is also producing the moment about the x axis, right? So, this by will try to rotate this whole system about the x axis in, in this direction, right? And again, if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction, so the thumb will point out in the positive x direction. So, this means that it is producing the counterclockwise moment. So, we will write plus by and the perpendicular distance of this by from that point A or from that x axis is, is 100 plus 150 plus 100 so this as a whole is 350 mm right so we will multiply this with 350 and this will be equal to 0 and when we solve this so by equals to 70.9 cos of 20 degrees into 100 divided by 350 and by equals to 19.04 newtons right so this is the reaction at at bearing b in the y direction right now if we apply the summation of moment along y axis is at point a equals to zero all those forces which are parallel to the y axis so they will not produce the moment about y axis so as we can see that this will not produce the moment about y axis this b y this a y and a x still will not produce the moment about the y axis 
right and this p y will not produce the moment about y axis is right so now we are left with this p x 100 newton and this 200 newton so they are producing the moment about the the y axis is right so now as we can see that this p sine of 20 will try to rotate the whole system about the y axis is in this direction and if we curl our right hand finger so the thumb will point out in the positive y direction right so we we can write that this this p x is the sine component right so we will write plus 70.9 sine of 20 degrees and the perpendicular uh, distance of this px component from the uh, y axis is, is equal to 100 mm right so we will multiply this with 100 similarly as we can see that this 200 and this 100 newton both are both will try to produce to produce the moment about y axis in this direction right so we can write that this will be uh, and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the negative y direction right so this means that this 100 newton force is producing the clockwise moment about this y axis so we will write minus 100 and the perpendicular distance of this 100 newton from the point a is how much so this is 100 plus 150 so this is 250 Similarly, this 200 Newton force will again try to rotate the whole system in this direction. And if we curl our right hand finger, so the thumb will point out in the negative y direction. So we will write again minus 200 and this will be multiplied with 250, right? Since the perpendicular distance of this 200 Newton from that point A is also this 100 mm plus 150 mm, right? This Bx is also uh, producing the moment about y axis is so this b axis will also produce the moment about this y axis is in the same direction right and if we curl our right hand finger so again this will point out in the negative y direction so we will write minus b x and the perpendicular distance of this b x from the y axis is, is this much this is 350 right so we will multiply this with 350 and this will be equal to 0 right so from this bx will be equal to minus 207.35 newtons right so this is bx reaction now since we are required to find the resultant reaction at a and b so the resultant reaction at b will be equal to bx square plus by square under the root 2 by using the pythagoras theorem so then this b bx is known which is 207.35 so minus 207.35 squared plus by 19.04 squared so this total reaction at point b equals to 208.22 newtons so we can say that it is approximately 208 newtons right now if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 so now as we can see that this a x is acting in the positive x direction so we will write a x this p x is acting in the negative x direction right so we will write minus p x and p x is the sign component so we will write minus 70.9 sine of 20 degrees this b x is acting in the positive x direction so we will write plus b x and we know the bx magnitude right so bx magnitude is this minus 207.35 right so we will write minus 207.35 and this 100 newton is also acting in the positive x direction and this 200 newton is also acting in the positive x direction so we will write 200 plus 100 right so this is equal to 300 and this will be equal to zero so from this we get ax equals to minus 68.40 newton right the negative sign means that the assumed direction of ax is not accurate we have to reverse the direction of ax right so this means that ax is actually acting in the negative x direction right and similarly bx is also acting in the negative x direction right now if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to zero 
since the system is in equilibrium right so as we can see that this a y is acting in the positive y direction so we will write plus a y this b y is acting in the positive y directions and since we know the magnitude of b y which is 19.04 right this is b y and this p y component is acting in the negative y direction so we will write minus p magnitude is 70.9 cos of 20 degrees right and this will be equal to 0 so from this we get a y which is equal to 47.58 newtons right since we know a x and any y so we can find the total resultant reaction at point a at bearing a so then a will be equal to a x square plus a y square under the root and this a will be equal to a x is minus 68.40 squared plus 47.58 squared And this A equals to 83.3 Newtons, right? So, this is the magnitude, the total resu resultant at bearing A. And this is the total resultant at bearing B, right? 208 Newtons. And this is the force P magnitude that is applied at this gear tooth, right? So, this is the required solution of this particular problem.